Hi, my name is Rachel Kramer Bussell. I am an erotica anthology editor, author of How to Write Erotica, and editor of Open Secrets magazine. And I also write essays and articles. So you've edited more than 60, is that right? More Anthology? than 70 anthologies, yeah. More lot. than 70 anthologies of erotic fiction. You wrote a whole book about how to write erotica, but let's do like a little mini tutorial. Obviously people okay. need to get the book for the deep dive, but what would be some tips for how to get started? First, I think, you know, find something you want to write about. There's prompts in my book. And some of them are really basic, like literally I can see your living room. So I see these chairs. One of my prompts is write erotica set in a chair or about a chair. And that could be a bar stool. It could be a office chair. It could be any kind of chair. And I like that prompt because usually people are writing about sex in a bed or some other setting. They're not usually writing about a chair and probably for two people to have, let's say, intercourse in a chair might be awkward, but there's tons of other things you can do in a chair. Someone uh -huh. could be tied to a chair. I've written several restaurant stories where someone is sitting in a chair and something is happening either above the table or below the table. There's just like <laughs> so many things you can do. And I think you could apply that prompt to almost any piece of furniture or any room in your house. Like you could say, okay, I'm going to write erotica set at a desk or in the bathroom or on the roof or in the basement or the attic and you know just play with that or if you already have an idea in your head like you saw something on the news about I don't know a celebrity or you saw just something or you overheard something I mean I've written stories just based on a subway ad there was this tv show necessary roughness and it was, I think. Oh my God, I was show. a writer's assistant on that Are you show. serious? Yeah. Okay, so I never saw it and I actually don't really know what it's about, but it's a football term, right? Yeah. So I wrote a short story called Necessary Roughness. I'm going to send you that book. <laughs> That's so funny. I just thought, what a perfect erotica story title. I don't have to know what this is about in real life to write an erotica story based on this. So I love like eavesdropping on people's conversations and picking up like a phrase or just a snippet. And I'm not saying go eavesdrop and like write down that person's life or go on set life and like copy someone's life story. Don't do that. But you can definitely get inspiration from like literally anywhere. I mean, you go on Twitter, you go on, on set life or on any dating site. And like, I mean, I'm not on dating apps because I'm in a long-term relationship, but if I was and I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to swipe. I, this is embarrassing. I don't even know which is left or right, like which is the right, <laughs> you know, the good one, a bad one. But if I'm not going to like say yes to that person, maybe like they could prompt an erotica story. You don't, you don't have to tell them. I mean, you don't really know that much about them anyway, but maybe just like something about their photo or their profile, you're like, I'm going to try to eroticize it right on you. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or take headlines like <laughs> Donald Trump's indictment. I mean, maybe someone's having like an indictment party and they're like, every time he says indicated you beat someone or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like Stormy's revenge erotica. Mm -hmm. I yeah. can see that. Well, if you go on Amazon, there are a lot of, I'm sure there's Trump, but there's other, I, I can't think off the top of my head, but like every election cycle, there are. Oh, are, I bet. Are yeah. And that actually is reminding me, speaking of publicity, this site is no longer online, but for a very brief moment in time, I had a website called Sarah Palin Erotica and it ah. was uh, <laughs> like fan fiction about her because sort of like, not that she's like Monica, but she was someone who people were just intrigued by. And I was intrigued by just how ridiculous she was. And I thought it would be an opportunity to sort of make fun of that within an erotica context. I, I think I took it down because I was worried about like the secret service coming after me or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure that if you wrote fan fiction about someone very famous, and it was good enough, you could get attention for that. There's a famous story called Courtney Cox's Asshole. That, what? Uh, actually, it's written by the writer now known as Joey Soloway, but it's, it's online somewhere. Oh, it's, really? It's, Tell me. Tell me about it. It's, 
been so long since I read it, but like it's about I think a woman whose job is bleaching Courtney Cox's <laughs> apple. I think like at, look it up because it's it's online. But that story helped put them on the map. I think like in in some writing circles. So I'm not saying everyone should be writing erotic fan fiction, but I think it also you really have to ask yourself like. Is it coming from a genuine interest in the person? Because I always think that will come across, whether you're writing celebrity erotica or whatever it is. When you're starting out, especially, don't pick a fetish to write about that you hate or you know absolutely nothing about unless you have access to like research about it. Like I've written about fire eating and that actually scares me. Like I've seen it in person and I'm fascinated by it, but I actually find it terrifying and I would never eat fire myself. But that pushed me to try to write about it because I wanted to know what that was like. And I had to do a lot of research to find out how do you put out a fire in your mouth without burning yourself and then make that sexy. So don't try something super complicated like that your first time writing erotica. Like generally, I would say use a fantasy of yours or an interest of yours. Even if the real life interest isn't sexual, you can eroticize it for your fictional purposes. Or you can also take like a terrible experience. You know, maybe you've been waiting online at the DMV for three hours and you want to like punch (laughs) someone and you're just like, ah, is it even worth it? Like, do I need my license? But maybe you can eroticize like people hooking up at the DMV. Nice. Yeah. I would say just go faster. Yeah. (laughs) Start with something in front of you or something in your life that you're already thinking about and then see what happens as you start writing. Like you don't have to know everything that's going to happen right away. Yeah. I would think you would want to start from a place of what turned you on because that's the whole genre is turning people on. So like, yes. it seems like write what you know. <laughs> I, I would say write what you know at the beginning, and then you can definitely branch out. I think it's going to be just much harder to write about something you hate or that yes. like, turns you off I think that's different than writing about something that maybe you're neutral on so you know I I don't think you have to choose the thing that's the most challenging to start like choose something relatively in your wheelhouse and then see what happens do you mostly like how erotica works in your personal sexuality are you like discovering new things through your writing that you like would want to try or are you like exploring the fantasy through the writing and then you're like I don't even need to try this or do you know what I'm kind of getting I know what you're saying I would say in the past I have I've definitely written about things that I was curious about or that you know I'd heard about and wanted to explore and sometimes those are things that weren't conscious like I wrote a story about a professional submissive and there was daddy play and I was like that's weird because that's not actually my personal fetish but writing the story really turned me on and I think those can be two different things you can be very into the fantasy of your fictional story and be like this written down is hot but I don't actually want to try that or it Uh could be the opposite where writing it down makes you realize that you want to try it I would say now my erotica is more I wouldn't say it's more cerebral, but it's more maybe theoretical. Like it's not Uh directly related to my personal sex life. But I think that's partly because I've been doing it for so long. I've written so much inspired by my own life, like either loosely veiled. Like I wrote about my first lap dance, the story called Lap Dance Lust. Um, And that is another story that I'm going to say is 100% true. I mean, it's set at Cheetahs in LA and it's like (laughs) me getting a lap dance and the woman told me this is so long ago now I don't remember what year but it's probably 20 years ago she told me about a celebrity who had come in I did not name that person in the story but I I just dictated what happened but actually that's not true I didn't dictate what happened I think that's another misnomer about especially erotica but also other fiction people think you just write down what happened and you're done Uh it's actually really hard to write a fiction about your own life because you're always choosing bits and pieces to include and you're massaging the details and you're using like the craft of writing to tell a story. And I'm going to actually say that applies to essays too. People also think, well, it happened to you. So you just sit down and write it and you're done. And it's super challenging to write an essay 
partly I think because it happened to you. So you know everything that happened before, everything right, that happened right. after. There's so many details you could put in and you're like, which one are relevant and what is the actual heart of what I'm trying to say? So it's not always as simple as write what you know, but if you have had a momentous sexual experience, I, I think don't feel beholden to all the real details. Like it can have happened the way you write it, but the character it happened to might not be you. Uh huh. What are your favorite pieces of erotica that other people have written? Like classics or uh, maybe not classics. Yeah. Maybe they're more obscure. They're not like classic classics. There's a book I always recommend. I love it. It's called Secret S E. It's like the S dot period dot E dot period, et cetera, by mm-hmm. L. Marie Adeline. It's a trilogy, but the first one is amazing. They're all good, but I loved it because it's this erotic romance, but it's really more on the erotica side about this woman who her life is going horribly. Like she's very down on her luck and this other group of women swoop in and are like, we're going to fulfill your top sexual fantasies, write them down (laughs) and we will make them happen. And she doesn't know exactly how they're going to make them happen. And the reader doesn't either, but they do. And it's so hot. There's a scene, I think in the second one where this woman goes into the cockpit of a plane and like does stuff with the pilot, but she's also scared of flying. Like, I think (laughs) why I like it is that the sex is super hot, but it's also literally these women's fantasies coming true. And you're like, that's, exactly why people read erotica so that I one that. I love I love Katrina Jackson I mean I've read various books of hers she's a great author but the ones that surprise me the most are that she has this mafia romance series and I don't read mafia romance the violence freaks me out like usually I'm not going to be reading a mafia romance because I was already a fan of hers I thought let me try her mafia romance and it's really sexy <laughs> Like you, I got sucked into the mafia. And even though, yes, you know, this man's job is basically being a hitman. You're like, oh, but he's a sexy hitman. Yeah. So those two, I like, there's a literary novel that is not erotica, but has some of the sexiest writing I've ever read. It's called A Concise Chinese English Dictionary for Lovers. Oh. I don't know how to say the author's name, but it's X-I-A-O-L-U-G-U-O. And I just found it at a bookstore a long time ago in London. And it's about a woman who moves from rural China to London and is learning English throughout the course of the book. And at one point she goes to like a a peep show or like a, I don't think it's a strip club. I think it's a peep show. And so she's describing the women she sees and how sexy they are, but in language that works for her. So she says things like her flower. Whereas if I was reading like a modern erotica book by a native English speaker who was like, oh, her flower, I'd be like, oh, that's so cheesy. But in that context, it totally works. Um, Oh, interesting. So those are like three that I recommend. I remember being a kid and reading my mom's copy of Bridges of Madison County and being like, so turned on. (laughs) I love that. I think like anything could be sexy if it's, if you're in the mindset, not anything, but like if you're in the mindset for that and especially if you haven't read a lot of sexy things and you read one sexy thing and like, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. As a teenager, this has been awesome. I'm so glad. I feel like I, I don't, I was trying to think of how I knew of you originally, but I couldn't, I just feel like I've, <laughs> I've like known of you for a long time and I couldn't even put my finger on it. <laughs> so I'm glad we finally got to do this is my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm a big fan of the show. So I was excited to be on. Yay. Um, how can listeners connect with you online? You can visit my website, rachelkramerbustle.com. I have a substack, rachelkramerbustle.substack.com. You can find the best women's erotica series, bweoftheyear.com. I'm on Instagram, rachelkramerbustle. I'm on social the most at Twitter, at Raquelita. And also visit opensecrets.substack.com and please subscribe. And every Monday we'll be posting a new episode. Yay. 